I didn't think so. I counted it on Some of it is. That we can go ahead and go. Well, okay, six o'clock. Call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Doug Housen. Here. Kenny Marlette. Here. Brandon Marquardt. Here. Dave Moore. Here. Matt Smith. Here. Need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Community forum. Is anyone here like to speak to community forum? Mr. Miller is here. Okay. Uh, I wanted to talk about. Jacob, would you stand up? We'll be yeah. able to hear you better. Thanks. Uh, I wanted to talk about being able to play sports. Um, I got in trouble twice for drinking. The first time I got in trouble was uh, taking. No. First time I got in trouble was taking the fall for uh, somebody else having a vape on them. And. They were a senior, and I didn't want. And they were a friend, and I didn't want them to get in trouble, so I took the fall for it. Uh, and I already missed football, but I wanted to see if I was able to wrestle or do soccer. Um, I talked to Brandon already. Uh, he said it would be okay if all you guys approve of me being able to do any sports. I'll do as many community hours as you guys choose. Um, but I just wanted to see if I was able to do any sports. All right. I don't want to cut you off, Jacob. If you're, are you done? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks. Um, just to give you some context, um, you know, Jacob's been very honest and very truthful with what happened, and I appreciate that, Jacob. It, it takes a lot to be able to come into a room and talk about that. So I give you credit for that. Um, Mr. Brown took him through the policy, you know, implemented the consequences according to the policy. Jacob came and talked to me because that was the next step for an appeal. Um, we reviewed the procedures. I determined that we followed the policy. And so now Jacob, we explained his next step is to come to the board. If the board would like to give him a chance to appeal, it won't be tonight because it wasn't an agenda item, but we could certainly set something up where you could listen to Jacob and hear his appeal if you wanted to do that. Okay, so you're done, so I don't. So I appreciate you coming in tonight. That's worth a lot. Mm -hmm. It is, and he's not been in any trouble since his third time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these guys will talk, Jacob, and I'll be in touch with you, and I'll let you know what they feel they want to do. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, Jay, for coming in. <clears throat> Anyone else like to speak to public forum? Community forum. Okay, we'll move on to approval of the minutes. Need a motion to approve? Move. Move and seconded to approve the minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Uh, <laughs> next up is approval of bills for payments. Anyone have any questions for Kenna? She's not. Yeah. She's going to be here if you got questions. Yeah. We can come back to it, but she's on her way. If not, I'll look for a motion to approve. So moved. Okay. moved and seconded to approve the bills for payment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. This month, the financial report, $4,588,373.84. Look for a motion to approve the financial report. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the financial report. All in favor say aye. 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 Post same sign, motion passes. Uh, next up, students of the month for October. Anybody here besides Grace and Nagel? <laughs> Grayson was nominated by Mrs. Brockway. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> oh, next up we have the administrative reports. Uh, Shannon, you get to go first this month. Okay. I just shared with you guys all the um, things that we
It's designed to support the schools and not punish them. Okay? The schools are designated from priority or comprehensive at the bottom up to, up to exceptional is how they get classified. The way those scores, the schools are classified is based on this chart, um, the different weightings. They, the state of Iowa has put the most emphasis this year on growth. In the past, it was on proficiency on like ISAS, um, S, but now the, the most emphasis is put on growth. So you can see elementary is a little bit different. Elementary and middle school is a little bit different than high school. High school adds um, graduation rate and post-secondary readiness. But that's how the, the scores get built now. Each score gets their overall score based on these categories. Um, and then they also get scores for subgroups. It's important to note, though, that those subgroups have to have at least 20 students in it for it to count. Um, so some of our subgroups, since we are a small district, don't meet that requirement. So ours is based on our overall score. Um, here's how we broke down this year. For the elementary, the state average is 54.65. And we fell just above that at 54.73. So that put us in the acceptable range. Um, that means that we are not required to have any support through ESSA from the state or from the ADA. So that's a good thing. Something to definitely celebrate. You can see the last um, four years. Remember that in 2020, we did not do that. Because we didn't have a score because of COVID. So you can kind of see where we were. Um, we did have a little bit this year, but we still managed to fall in the acceptable range. The middle school overall score was 51.92. Again, that fell in the, the acceptable range. Um, so again, no support is required through ESSA for the middle school. Um, it was a definite gain from last year. We were at 48.89, and we jumped up to 51.92. So it's something to, to celebrate there for the middle school. And the high school, 51.89. Again, the state average was 54.65. Another growth from last year, we were at 50.88, so a whole point growth. And again, fell in the acceptable range, so we do not have any supports required for the high school building. So definite, some, some definite uh, celebrations this year for all three buildings. Um, I did share this presentation with you. The last page has the actual website for the Iowa School Performance links there, so you can click on that and you can look at any school in the state and see where the scores are. You can compare us to schools around us um, and see how we, we fared. Um, but we've got good things going on with our um, interventions, the growth uh, that we're making on the tests. So definitely some things to celebrate there. Any questions on the performance profile? Shannon, I just want to point out, if you do go to that website, it's set up by school building, not by school district. Correct. So every building gets their separate scores. So Des Moines has like 62 buildings getting scores, just so you know that. Do you have questions on that? No. Nope. Okay, I'm going to stop passing so I can get to my, uh, my other things. Um, recently, we completed the Savers and the My Savers screener, which are the social, emotional, behavior, and academic um, screeners that we do in the district. Actually, this Friday, the health leadership team is going to get together, and we're going to take an initial look at that data and see where um, some supports are needed for kids. Uh, our Tier 1 instruction, if you remember, with our Character Strong curriculum, has been put into place this year. It's probably too early to kind of really see effects of that, but we're hoping that as the years go on, we'll see our Tier 1 instruction beef up, and then the number of kids who are needing some Tier 2 and Tier 3 supports in the social-emotional um, behavior areas will kind of go down because of that support they're getting at the Tier 1 level. Um, on Friday, October 28th, we had a district-wide PBIS activity. Um, students from the, the elementary and the middle school and high school mixed together, and we did some fall activities. We had kids at the, the elementary building and kids at the high school. Um, positive remarks from all levels. The kids had a great time and enjoyed spending time with each other. Uh, middle school teachers are continuing to work on standards-based grading. If you remember, um, we are moving the middle school through power school with standards-based grading. If you have a student in middle school, you may have seen some of the growing pains we're having with this. Um, but we're continuing to work on it. We're not throwing it completely out because we know that um, assessing our students on the standards and their progression through the standards is the right thing to do. 
Um, it gives us a clear picture of what they know and what they can do. Power School on the technical side is not friendly with us, so we're working through that. The teachers actually have a Zoom with um, someone from Grantwood tomorrow afternoon to kind of ask some questions now that we've done this for our quarter um, to see if we can get, all get on the same page and, and keep working through it together. So that's all I have. Are there any questions? Thank you, Sharon. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Steve, you're up next. Uh, a few things here. Uh, I mentioned not, I mentioned last month um, the army, the army national guard in Milltown, uh, every year has a annual uh, trades expo where they invite area high schools. Um, you can either go down today or tomorrow. Um, our kids are going down tomorrow. Mr. Marshall is taking them. We have approximately between 20 and 25 students going to that. Um, nice thing about it, a lot of it's hands-on. Um, they get to choose um, anywhere from HVAC, carpentry, um, electrician, heavy equipment operator. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for our kids. Um, National Honor Society this Thursday is sponsoring a blood drive. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any openings there yet um, left over. But if you do, um, you're more than welcome to come in. It runs until, I think, noon um, on Thursday. Um, second quarter, or excuse me, the second quarter peak parent teacher conference. Um, we did a little bit different this year than last, the, last, the last few years. Uh, last few years we've done uh, first, second, and third quarter. This year we decided to basically have them the same time that the elementary does, um, hold them once per semester. Um, our attendance was much better than what it has been in the past. Our eighth grade class was the winner with 66% of the parents there. The 10th graders had 44%. And overall, 47% of our parents came, uh, which if you look there, we had 10% of our parents left in the second quarter conference. So <coughs> probably a good idea that we, that we moved away from the way we did it before. Um, last thing, <clears throat> today I attend the principal's network meeting uh, in Minneapolis. Um, all the principals from the Southeast Iowa Super Conference um, the North and South Division schools are invited to attend. Today we had nine uh, principals represented. Um, some of the things that we discussed, um, CTE programs, good conduct policies, uh, graduation requirements, uh, salaries for pairs, secretaries, and substitutes, and standard-based grading. Uh, in the future, uh, we will be holding these network meetings uh, every third Wednesday, excuse me, every third Tuesday uh, of every month until the end. Great networking, um, good way to share ideas of what different schools are, are doing. Um, I came back and I shared some stuff with, with Mr. Brown about good conduct policies that other schools are doing. And uh, it's kind of interesting to hear what other people are doing. So that's it. Any questions for Steve? All right, thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Brandon, you're up next. Well, I got the hires that you'll get to in a little bit. Uh, and I think really the main thing I had tonight was to declare some equipment surplus. Um, Mr. Romhaut was cleaning out the cross country stuff that Mr. Peck had left him. Finally had a chance to go through it and he found a lot of stuff that's really outdated. <laughs> old cross country uniforms that are like navy blue and yellow and um, just some <clears> random. <throat> there was a couple ties in there. I mean, you imagine somebody just took a box and threw some stuff in it. That's kind of what he ran into. and. He, he would like to get rid of it, and if there's anything in there that we can do what we did before and surplus sell, we'll certainly do that, but I look at what I saw in there, I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, the wall pads from the main gym, later, that's going to be an action item uh, later in the meeting. Uh, just kind of tell you my plan. Um, there's four big pads, two with spears on them or arrows, and two with uh, Indian heads on them. What I'd like to do is sell those four pads for like 150 a piece. See if we have any takers. I've already been contacted by two or three people asking me about what we're doing with those specific pads. So I imagine we're going to have somebody that wants them. Um, the rest of them, try to repurpose as much as we can. Some of them, uh, I know that the sensory room would like some of them to go over to the elementary to put in that room. Um, and then if if we have enough left and if, if Brett would like them, we can use some in the elementary gym if uh, he feels like he can do that. But anything else that we have after that, we'd like. I'd like to get rid of them so they're not taking up storage space. Um, the wall pads that we have 
had installed. Uh, if you haven't got a chance to look at them, they look very nice. They got put in last Tuesday. Uh, feel free to stop by and jump into the gym and just check them out. It makes the gym look a lot bigger. I think it's because it, maybe the color's a little brighter, but it doesn't feel like the, the walls on the ends are so tight anymore. Uh, I don't, if anybody else has seen them, you can maybe say that, I don't know, but they, you can feel it's brighter in there, let's put it that way. Um, so that, so those are installed, they're done. Uh, the last bit is that uh, I do have the qualifying banners, and I put that in the notes. The qualifying banners are going to go up on the home side of the gym, um, behind our our bands, um, when they get up, when Rob gets back, because he's obviously he's going to be gone for a couple of weeks. So when he gets back, uh, hopefully those get put up sometime, maybe after Thanksgiving. Day. So that's all I got tonight. Okay. Any questions for Brandon? Those pads, I mean, it, do you think there's enough interest in them to do like an online auction or something along those lines where you can, I'm just worried if, you know, if there's certain people that want a shot at them that don't get a shot at them, yeah, you know, the way to make it to where. I mean, we can. Uh, I would, I mean, yeah, I mean, we can do it. I'll do it however the board wants to do it. My only thing is we need to expedite getting rid of them because right now they're in the closets of the gym. And they're taking up all the storage space because there's a lot of them. I don't know how much interest there'd be in them, but I'm just my only fear would be if somebody said, "Man, I wish I'd have known that and got a shot at it." You put it out there like on an online auction, can you make a little bit more money and get everybody a fair shot? I mean, I don't, I don't disagree. I don't know how, how is there a place we can put that, or do they have any ideas? Probably just do bids on it. <clears throat> What's that? Just do bids on it? Yeah. Just do I mean, yeah, I wouldn't overcomplicate it, but just something, you know, even if you just put it up on the school website. Uh, well, here's the question. We have a scrimmage on we have a scrimmage on uh, Friday. I could put it up at the scrimmage, the girls' scrimmage on Friday. It's like a regular game. We could do it the first home game, and then we could do it the first home game with the boys and girls together and <coughs> shut it down. Just do a silent auction. Just silent auction. auction. Have, sure. We can set them up in the cafeteria, set two of, one of each up in the cafeteria and say, here they are. If you want to bid on them, you know, here's the paper, bid on them. And then at the end of those three games, we can just pull the bids and say, that's the winner. I mean, we can do it. That We can start it at whatever we want at that point, too. So, I mean, if, that, if sure. you think that you'd rather go that route, I don't disagree with that. Maybe we'll make more money. You have multiple winners. Yeah. I have no problem with that. I have no problem doing that. That that basically is harboring them for two weeks versus, I mean, I don't want to end up with them clear past Christmas. You know, I if, I get, if I can get them out of there, let's yeah. get them out of there. Look, that's what's happened in the past. We've had a lot of stuff just set, and it just piles and piles and piles. So if I have no problem doing that, but let's let's try to make it those three, three nights, and then we'll get rid of them. That's okay with you guys. That mm -hmm. sounds fine. All right, any other questions for Brandon? All right, thank you. Yep. Mike, you're up next. All right, my report's in front of you. Tomorrow we have our on-site safety audits. This is through the governor's um, school safety program. Once we get the results back from these audits, we can then decide what we want to use the $50,000 in grant money for. The only stipulation is it has to be tied to something that is contained in the audit. So those will both get done tomorrow. Morning Sun had theirs today. The process took a little under an hour for them, so it'll probably take a little over an hour for each of our buildings over here, I'm guessing. Uh, the election, all I'm going to say is thank goodness it's over. You know, the campaign ads are done, although the campaign for 2024 is going to start up sooner than any of us wanted. Um, the Republicans expanded their majorities in the Iowa legislature. What that means is expect vouchers to be at the top of the legislative priority list. So um, it did not pass last year, but with the expanded majorities, I'll guarantee you it'll appear again. As social worker, we have our first meeting for this grant <coughs> program on Friday. Uh, we need to have a steering committee for this. We're going to have it be the health leadership team that we have to have in place for another grant we got. Shannon and I talked, why have two groups if we can dovetail them into one? So that's gonna happen on Friday. 
Okay. Um, reminder, you set a work session for December 1st at 6 o'clock. We're going to have our financial planner down here to talk about possible bonding capacity or borrowing capacity. Um, I've also asked a representative from OPA to be there so that we can talk about some of the challenges we've been dealing with lately. I've included our new legislative contact information. Um, I've met with both Representative Collins and Senator Lofgren. I think we're going to have a decent working relationship with both of them. So that is their contact information um, as most up to date as I have it. You can see I have a meeting on December 7th that will take me out of the district. And if you flip over, you will see our student count as of Power School this morning. Any questions for Mike? Mike, when you, prior to that yeah. work session, will you send an email or something out to the board just kind of maybe go into a little bit more detail on yeah. those challenges that yeah. we have with the... I'll with give you some context. Yeah. 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 All right, any other questions? All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, the maintenance director, Rob, is absent this mm -hmm. evening. Do you have anything, Mike? That I do not. Okay. Uh, so, last but not least, Brett. All right. Um, items are in your packet. You can briefly go through those. Uh, Parent-teacher conferences is probably the biggest thing here. Last week, Wednesday and Thursday, attendance was very good. Um, we have 96% for attendance. Uh, 337 out of 351. Off my count of the parents that were able to make it to the meetings and, and teachers attending those. So. Very good. Always good to have parents in the building. And uh, quality conversations all along, I think, from, from everything I heard. So, uh, book fair was held at the same time. Um, I bring this up just because it it's, gives a lot back to uh, the library. It's usually around $1,000 to $1,500 from Scholastic that goes right back into the, the library for, for books for the kids. So. Um, while it's kind of a, a hectic time and uh, a little bit of work, it's worth it to have that come back to us. So um, thanks to everybody that helped out with that. Uh, Lego, Lego Robotics, um, I brought this up, I think, every meeting since you know, August. Um, they're going to be in later giving a presentation, but uh, coming up here in December, they're going to be attending the Putnam Museum, and I'm sure they're going to share more, so I won't go too far into that. I'll let them know. <laughs> so, um, character strong, purposeful people. The, the month of November is we're focused on gratitude. So we've been having lessons on gratitude in the month of November. Um, it's going well. Kids are excited about it, and teachers are liking it as well, which makes everything a little bit better. Um, several courses going on with staff with some learning opportunities, a lot of book studies that are going on, um, both just for people's own learning and also for some of the TCU uh, hours as well. So kids see learning happening with the, the teachers and things that they're interested in, as well as some things that are discouraged too. Uh, this past weekend, the last thing I have here, four UN events were installed. Um, these are the digital thermostats with those. There's a little bit of work to be done in a couple of those. Uh, we've contacted the desk to come in and take a look at them. So four of those have been put in this weekend. Um, but there's still some work to be done with that. So that's all I've got right now. Any questions for Brett? <clears throat> all right, thank you, Brett. Yeah. Okay, moving on to personnel, hires. We have several. Uh, let's start with Nate Atkinson first, assistant varsity football. Brandon, is there anything you want to say about any of these? Uh, They're all yours. Well, so the first one, Nate. Uh, Nate is uh, showed expressed that he would like to come back as an assistant varsity football coach. Um, the only thing that would change that for Nate, obviously, is uh, he does have a – family situation where his daughter sometimes needs a little extensive care. If something changed there, that would change, obviously, but um, that hasn't been a problem in the past, and he would, he would like to continue on. Uh, Brittany Beating, uh, I have up there to come back as, uh, or to move up to the second assistant volleyball coach at the high school level. 
She currently serves as a junior high volleyball coach. That's the position that we created extra because of the fresh soft JV and varsity schedules. Um, I will say that I wouldn't put that up there if I didn't see it was necessary next year, but looking at the numbers, I think they were, I want to say 32 this year. Uh, they lost six seniors. They potentially have 13 kids coming. So the numbers are increasing in volleyball. So certainly don't see a reason to, to not have that one next year. Um, Gordon Wagner, who is our current junior high, one of our current junior high volleyball coaches, like would like to come back and I'd like to have her back. Uh, Kenna is head coach of the volleyball team, the high school volleyball team. Joe is her first assistant. Uh, and I will say that I did talk to uh, Brittany and made it known that uh, in a budget situation, that would be the one that would go first with, because it was created <coughs> class. So she's aware of that. Um, Jacob Mason and, and Cody uh, back as junior high football coaches. They did a great job this year with those kids, very positive. Uh, I had the, the privilege to spend a week with, uh, or not a week, but a few days with Cody while uh, Jacob was in Des Moines at uh, training for the school. Um, it was a very good experience. The kids, the kids are you got two guys that um, they're willing to learn and, and they're willing to work with the kids. And I think it's a very positive experience. And it's always good to have Cody not just be an officer in the building, but also uh, to get to be on a field or a court or a mat with the kids as well. So they get to see him not just as a police officer all the time. Um, and last but not least, Andrew Rompot, who I, I think did a fantastic job with the cross country team. I watched the numbers grow this year already. Uh, and He's going to do junior high track course in the, in the spring. Uh, it is no doubt in my mind that he's going to continue to grow that cross-country program. It's been a long time since they've had uh, that kind of direction and, and uh, uh, plan in, in place to, to continue to, to be successful. So those are, those are the ones that I put up there this month to get those jobs filled that are open currently. If there's no questions, we'll start with Nate Atkinson, first assistant volleyball varsity football. Make motion to hire Nate Atkinson, first assistant varsity football. Second. Motion and seconded to hire Nate Atkinson, first assistant varsity football. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Brittany Beating, second assistant high school volleyball. Move to hire Brittany Beating, second assistant high school volleyball coach. Second. Moved and seconded for Brittany Beating, second assistant high school volleyball coach. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, Courtney Wagner, junior high volleyball. Moved for Courtney Wagner for junior high volleyball. Second. Motion and seconded for Courtney Wagner, junior high volleyball. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Kenna Grinder, high, head high school volleyball. Make a motion to hire Kenna for head high school volleyball. Second. Motion and seconded for Kenna Greiner, head high school volleyball. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Joe Cross, first assistant high school volleyball coach. Make a motion to hire Joe for first assistant high school volleyball coach. Second. Motion and seconded for Joe Cross, first assistant high school volleyball coach. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Jacob Mace, junior high football coach. Make a motion to hire Jacob Mace, junior high football coach. Second. Motion and seconded. Jacob Mace, junior high football. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Cody Aplara, junior high football coach. Motion to hire Cody Aplara, junior high football. Second. Motion and second to hire Cody Aplara. Mm -hmm. I never can pronounce that. Junior high football coach. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. And Andrew Rompot, junior high high school and cross country coach. Make a motion to hire Andrew. High school cross country coach. <coughs> Motion and seconded for Andrew Rompot, junior high high school cross country coach. All favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay, moving on to new business. Item A First Lego League Challenge Team Presentation. Team one. Are we doing this separate Yeah. Yeah, they're two separate. Okay, ones. conserving energy at the elementary. Well, I'm going to introduce our group. <laughs> So I'm Abby Boyson, who's a member for Iowa State University Extension Outreach, and this is Robo Loco, our first Lego League 4-H club. It's an after-school program, so we meet every Wednesday uh, from 1 to now 3.30. Um, and we have some tech mentors. So we have 21 members, two teams, and 14 tech mentors. We are working with the high school robotics team, and 
they're giving us support and mentoring us with the box and the prep for competition. And I have two of my tech mentors here tonight, Kaylin Griffin, and she's our team building. So she works through mindfulness and team activities. Uh, she's also our design. So when you see their slides and you see their team logo, she designed those. And then we also have Emma Gillette, and she helps out with the interview grooming. So our um, youth are going to present an innovative project, which is what we're doing tonight. And then they'll have um, judging and interview questions at competition on Saturday, December 10th at the Putnam Museum. Uh, I'm a leader, and Barb Dunham is a co-leader, wherever she is. Trisha Lands is a, a volunteer. And then Jessica Nagel is going to be a pit volunteer when we go to competition. And we also have some team mentors because this project, Super Powered, was over my head. So I pulled in the experts, and I have Mike Morfield from Fort Madison, Morfield Electric. He's been coming up and helping the kids with their energy audit, which they're going to talk about. And then I also have Terry from Redline Renewables in Des Moines. And he's been down to work with us, and we've had countless Zooms, and they've been really patient with me um, as they've coached me through coaching the youth and work with them directly. So um, I wanted to say thank you for being here tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so uh, without further ado, let's get ready to start. So, Abby, do I have the right presentation? You have the right presentation. Okay. I'm going to stand by you. Or are you are you advancing the slides? Are I you can. Or you can. It's okay. okay. They're just going to watch me not. So this is their first performance. Sure. Presentation. Innovative project. How we did? How did we attempt to solve a real problem? We wanted to determine if our school's energy consumption is efficient and if we could many improve it. Many new schools are built energy efficient, but older existing schools could benefit from an energy audit to save money. Team one global emperors, Tegan Becerra, Samuel Lacey, and Ethan Brown, Kane Doppler, Baylor Lands, Grayson Nagel, Wesley Parsons, Bennett Shutt, Gerald Sh Solomon, Tasker Timmerman, Gage Yard. Electricians, install and repair electrical wiring systems and fixtures and buildings. Energy AI, what happens when electrician goes into every classroom and counts every light fixture and quantifies the total wattage of existing lighting system, evaluates the runtime of <coughs> fixtures to establish total kilowatt hours. Energy rates are increasing. In an energy audit, to help find ways to offset higher utility bills. Energy audit should help the floor store installer calculate the cost of installation. These will probably positively impact the facility cost. Um, why do people always say turn off the lights? When lights are off, it draws zero energy. In a commercial environment, 60% of the utility um, the light is six, lighting is 60% of the utility bill. Um, motion sensor lights are another way to save money and converting to LED lights will drastically reduce electrical consumption. Energy usage for light bulbs. To determine, determine how many hours light bulbs are running at Wobble Elementary School, we had to do some math. We completed a four step <coughs> process to Perform an audit. Step one, calculating runtime of each room in the elementary school. Total hours, 2,226. Step two, count all the existing lights in the building. There are 490 lights inside and outside the building. We need a mo We multiply watts by an hour during, and then we divide by 1,000 to get our kilowatt hours. Total Total wattage watts is four hours. For a set life, it is 36,736. Runtime is 2,226. Total, total if you use fluorescent light, is 8. 
Total current watts per red lighting is 11,242 watts. Total running time, 2,226 hours. Total current kilowatt usage is 25,247 kilowatts. Step 5. The existing fluorescent kilowatt hour usage is 81,774. The current LED kilowatt usage 25,247. The difference of savings is 56,530 kilowatt hours annually. The savings multiplied by Alliant Energy's 0 0.146 rate is $8,253 annually. Our school recently in LED lighting, lighting, which is saving the school more than $8,000 annually. There is potential for some additional savings by implementing occupancy sensor or turn off the lights that are left on overnight for extra savings. Due to the energy savings, if we install solar panels, we were able to have more efficient solar array or system. Does anybody have any questions? Did you guys have fun doing this? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for your presentation. That was very informational. Mike, do you want to say anything about your oh, sorry. <laughs> I tell you, it was a great experience. I mean, from all levels, the, to expose the kids to the trade and, and, and get them to think about energy efficiency uh, early on. Uh, you guys are very fortunate that you recently did do a LED upgrade, so there there was significant savings uh, already secured. So uh, you're you're on a good path forward. Um, just a great experience. I I, you know, I hope this opportunity in the future again. It's just it's actually a lot of fun for me. Thank you for helping out. Yeah, absolutely. Have any of you carried, carried, carried the ideas home to your, your, your residents at home? You make sure you turn lights off, mom um, dad have LED lights, things like that? Girl? <laughs> yes, I, I have, and it has been working, and my mom has been paying less money on her energy bill. Good. There you go. Any questions for our team before we bring in the next? Thanks. Thank you guys. Use a cell phone to read, read night. I walk in there, I can't find anything. The first thing I do is pull the chain. <laughs> in our environment. We research energy alternatives in our community and agreed that solar energy could provide clean electricity. We should use solar, use solar energy at our school. We are team, we are team two. The Galactic Bagels are Alex Chapman, Colin Knight, Elizabeth Parsons, Grant Parsons, Lauren Stevens, Sean Quigley, Wyatt Shutt, Ali Schwartz, Katie Schaefer, Kyle Wright. Energy Engineer. Analyze energy usage, design solar system, calculate cost savings. Solar panel efficiency. Our goal is to determine if solar panels will be cost effective to install and save you money. Calculation. Use Google Earth to view the rooftop, measure distance and area, measure the solar panel, and 
calculated the kilowatts per hour per panel, reviewed the Alliant energy bill for the last 12 months, and totaled the kilowatts per hour usage, and determined how much how many panels are needed for the annual kilowatt per hour. Numbers. A solar panel is 43 by 84 inches. One solar panel produces 435 watts. The roof is split into two sections. Section one will hold 720 panels and produces 389,000 kilowatts. Section two is 326 panels and produces 176,000 kilowatts. Both sections would hold 1,046 sol 1, solar panels. That is a total of 565,000 kilowatts. Our oh, annual wow. usage is 227,000 kilowatts. This means we only need 420 panels installed. After only 420 panels needed, um, producing 227,000 kilowatts per hour annually, more roof space than required leads me to future HVAC equipment. The cost analysis. The current rate through Alliant Energy is 14 and a half cents. The cost for installation would be. Three hundred sixty-five thousand four hundred dollars. We would earn. We would save thirty-three thousand three hundred forty-four dollars per year, and it would take us eleven years to pay pay off the debt. The cost for installation. Or we could get a rate through Redline Renewables, which is. Eleven and a half cents. There, there will be no installation costs, and it will make us. We will save seven thousand dollars a year. Eleven years. The solar panels will be paid off when this year's first graders are graduating seniors. Future savings. Over thirty years, the solar panels will save Buffalo. all feel that solar is a viable solution for our school? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where'd you come up with the team name? Uh, I just like, I just thought of bagels and I have a of space names. <laughs> <laughs> and our team building mentors created a voting sheet and it was always ba something bagels, so Galactic Bagels won and Keelan did our design, so 
Great job. Good job. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So I'd like to turn it over. Do you guys have any additional questions for team two? Well, I just want to know about red line removal, but I think that's where we're going. Yes, that's where we're headed. That's where we're headed. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to Terry. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough, so I'm going to go breathe. There you so go. I'm going to sigh, and you guys can just. Good job. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys. Good job. 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 And we will then go into judging. So I don't get to go in with the with the team members. They go on their own and they present. Uh, and they'll also be interviewed on their bot. So the high school robotics team has been coaching and training them um, each week faithfully. 14 mentors from the high school um, preparing them for their bot missions. So And then uh, we've split them up into groups. So they're doing interview grooming. And then team building because we talk, we are they're judged on the core values and gracious professionalism. So we work on ways that we can be um, great, gracious uh, in our uh, practice, and then how we can transfer that out into our school atmosphere. So thank you, Terry. Right. Yes, yeah, so thank thanks for being here. Um, I'm Terry Bork of Redline Renewables. Yeah, I mean these kids did a great job. Um, a lot of math we crunched. Uh, we had lots of patience to get through a lot of math. And it was nice that we got both teams tied together. We got the energy audit done. It was great to see that you already done the LED lights and we kind of had to trick ourselves say, okay, if we hadn't done the LEDs, this is what the impact was. Um, the numbers that got it right. I mean, we could, <coughs> if the school wanted to, to go solar, it's 11, 12 years payback. Um, let's not, if you come up with a capital, what Redline does is we finance projects. So we design it for you, we pay for it, and then we just sell you the electricity. Uh, we're doing it all over the state. Uh, Mediapolis is one of your close ones that you've probably been to, seen. Um, Notre Dame, down in Burlington, West Burlington Schools, Sigourney, Pekin, Knoxville, Perry, a few others. Um, basically what we do is we just find a way to make it cheaper for you, reduce your operating costs. Um, that $78,000 a year is what we can do just at the elementary. If we looked at some of the other buildings, there's potential savings in some of them. Uh, I don't know until we look at data. Sometimes we can save, sometimes we can't. The high schools are sometimes tricky because they're on a different rate structure. But if the energy audits haven't been done, the lighting hasn't been changed, Variable frequency drives, old motors, stuff that I work with Mike a lot on. Um, there's potential to save there. And it's it's cool. We find that a lot of schools are interested in it. Uh, and the way we go about it is another alternate, because you can save on your operating budget without dipping into your capital budget. You can get advantage of the tax credits that you can't get directly. So indirectly get that, which is what drives it. Um, and it's another option. I mean, it, it, it makes sense, and it makes sense at the elementary. So we would, we'd love to do one for the school. I haven't talked about how to go about that. And there you go. It's a public forum, so I can't put everything out there for everybody. Right. So, um, Perfect. But happy to answer questions on how that works, what you want to do next. You know, I like to do Q and A. So. Well, you've given us a lot of numbers and food for thought. So. Um, your contact information, if the board decides they want to pursue, does Abby have that, or? She does. And, okay. And I do have a formal proposal if you want it. You know, I do want to just put it out there for everybody to see, but, mm -hmm. you know, to go over. Um, what I would suggest, if it's something you really want to look at, this one makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I look at all the facilities for the schools. We usually do the entire school district. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times we can say that admin buildings, the bus farms, mm -hmm. the smaller ones. Um, Mediapolis was a little interesting because we were able to take them from one rate code to a different one and save a bunch of money on their elementary. High school didn't quite work out, but mm -hmm. we'll at least let you know. 
could, mm -hmm. we'll analyze it. If it doesn't work, I'll tell you. Um, I don't generally do projects that don't save money. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm an environmentalist. I, I know we need to do that because I've tasted the air in China and I don't need our kids to taste it here. Um, but I grew up in Iowa on a farm and it's still got to be fiscally responsible. So mm -hmm. that would be what I would like to go do is move forward and look at the rest of the facilities and then have a comprehensive plan and if it works, the project saves us some money. Something, Definitely something that we should, I mean, we have to put on an agenda to look yeah. at at some point. Well, we can certainly we, request that the information be compiled. I mean, and then, I mean, you pretty much said, I mean, uh, the audit or the mm -hmm. information they're going to provide us is at no cost. Yeah, right. I mean, all I need is electrical we like no bills. Cost. <laughs> to, to start our work. Cheap is always good. <laughs> Free is always good, right? <laughs> so I just need data. Yeah. Okay. Everything's based on data. We crunch numbers just like we showed the kids how to do. Mm -hmm. A little, a little more sophisticated, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm beyond fifth grade level, so I can <laughs> kill some more brains. <laughs> <Not much, yeah. laughs> well, anything that we can do to save mm -hmm. energy okay. or money, just like we're with the fun with the natural gas, you know, anytime yeah. we try to we cut those right. kind of operating costs. Mm -hmm. And then that gives us uh, opportunity to improve HVAC, air quality, <coughs> air conditioning, all kinds of different options if we can lessen our upfront utility costs. Mm -hmm. So the cheapest would you like to study that? Go for it. Yeah, I mean, if you've got a, uh, if you put together some numbers just based on the work the kids did, I mean, you go yeah, ahead and share that. It's going to be public just, anyways. Yeah, of course, that you want, and then yeah, I mean, I, I do. I mean, I have a proposal I can take with you. Yeah. yeah, but kudos to the kids for bringing this forward. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. Can, can the roof hold all the solar panels? I guess that was the That's thing I was the thinking question. right away. What we saw for the elementary is that we don't need all the roof. Mm -hmm. Right. So we we worked at backwards because we didn't have the yeah, I saw the right. energy data we figured out how much would fit on the roof and there's more than enough roof space there. Mm -hmm. Now if you decide to air condition the building, you're going to use a lot more juice. So mm -hmm. the good thing is there's extra space there. Okay. Is, now, is in, the roof in my structure a setup to that's what my question hold is. the weight? I don't know. Cause you I know, know like 10 years ago we looked at this and we were told the roof couldn't support it. Okay. But that was 10 years ago, and technology changes a lot. One of your designs, he did a canopy where the bus drop-off is. Okay. I could show this on the screen. That has the solar want. panels on you it. You would prefer a, a roof mount versus a field, or is it just no. depend on the application? It depends. I mean, I, you'll see in there, there's, and we can break, I have a PDF you can throw up on the screen if you want. We can put it on the ground. There, there's pluses and minuses, right? So if you put it on the ground, you're taking up space. Mm -hmm. So you obviously don't put it on a practice field or somewhere for recess or whatever because it's got to be fenced up, et cetera. Mm -hmm. it, it does some cool things. I mean, we're starting to plant native flowers, native prairie underneath these mm -hmm. so that we can minimize the mowing costs. Um, it's out of the way. We don't mm -hmm. have to deal with it on the roof. Now, when we do flat roofs, they're ballasted. They're just weighed down with bricks. Three and a half to four and a half pounds per square foot, depending on a variety of factors. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, if you walk on top of that roof and it doesn't mm -hmm. flex, it's probably strong. Um, the other option I threw out there is parking can a canopy over the bus drop off mm -hmm. on the north side, which is just kind of innovative. If you've been to Minneapolis, you've seen what canopies mm -hmm. look like. Or if you've been down to SCC, you've seen those yeah. ours too. They cost more because they have structure. Mm -hmm. We can get to the savings on the roof and on the ground. Canopy is more expensive. I can't quite, on a pure energy basis, get the savings. But it adds other values of kids get off the bus and it's raining, they're not getting wet. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. So mm -hmm. that's that's up to you. you know? Right. Um, well, if you're willing to do a comprehensive study of the district, I think we're more than willing to look at it. Absolutely. I just yeah. need electricity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then if you haven't done an energy audit lately, we can definitely. Yeah, actually, yeah, the, the elementary school I said was, was great, and very, very well done. Um, but yeah, we'll have to get this going. Okay. Have right. you done LED changes at the other? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then we'll just be looking at some of the electrical equipment. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's some opportunity. There's, there's definitely some more opportunity. Okay, perfect. Can we just give Alliance permission to go directly with him? I, I mean, no, can I, I can make it easier you, with you? For I can you? send you a customer authorization form to sign, yeah. and I can deal with Alliance. Right? Perfect. Yeah, Cut out the little steps. steps. As far as our bills go? Yeah. We, okay. Yeah, and we probably will have to anyway, because oh, my guess is man. high school will be a demand meter, and it's only 15-minute interval data. Unless you want to get me every 15 minutes for 365 days a year. So. No, I'll be happy to sign your form. Right? <laughs> <laughs> get get on that area. Where do I sign? Where do I sign? Where do I sign? Okay. It's why I have life there. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Jacob, if you don't want to stay, you don't have to. You're more than welcome to, but you don't have to. Well, I had a question for you. I knew they were coming out there, but I'd never seen it before. I never knew that. It makes sense. I'm glad they didn't swap those numbers out there because I don't know I know where you are during the day. I didn't have to keep you. Oh, I'd continue to have you. All right. We got a lot of people doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, next up is item B, FFA National Convention presentation. They were unable to attend tonight, so we'll be postponing that. Yep. So we'll move on to item C, consideration to approve the list of proposed fundraisers. I believe you got five in there. Elementary Student Council selling gel pens. Wrestling cheerleaders doing some kind of coffee bar. Student Council at the high school is doing Valentine's <coughs> Day suckers along with flowers. And they're going to do some Thanksgiving suckers. And the Spanish Club is doing t-shirts. Make a motion to approve the list of fundraisers. Second. Motion and second to produce or to approve the list of proposed fundraisers. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Item D, consideration to approve board policies 505.1 through 505.10. Eric, did these make it in the packet? I didn't I didn't see them. Yeah, there. Um, so I don't know. I thought they were. Okay. They? No, that's the next best. 602 is where I start. Yeah, yeah I okay. start at Well, that's my fault then. So, you have a couple options. I mean, I'm not recommending any changes to those. <coughs> if you're comfortable approving them without having them right in front of you to look at, you can do that. If you'd rather postpone that set until next month, you can do that as well. Totally up to you. I don't want to postpone something we have or approve something we have to look at. Sure. Okay. Yep. That's totally fine. We can, uh, so we will table that. Right, we have a motion to table they, until yeah. next until information is provided. Yep. I'll make a motion to table approval of board policies 505.1 through 505.10. Motion and seconded to uh, table the consideration to approve board policies 505.1 through 505.10. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Item E, consideration to approve second reading of new or rewritten board policies 602.2, 602.3, 605.3 E2, and 605.3 E4. All right. These are the same things that you saw last month. Um, since they're significantly rewritten or new, I'd ask you to do a second reading. If you approve the second reading tonight, they will go in the policy book. No changes from last month. I'll make a motion to approve all of those in 605.3 R1. Thanks, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> Tough, bro. I know. Yeah. They slap.
Second. Motion and seconded to approve board policy 602.2 through 605.3 R1. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Item F, consideration to declare gym wall pads and miscellaneous cross-country items as surplus. I think Brandon gave us some information earlier about what he was wanting to do with those, so. I'll make a motion to declare gym wall pads and miscellaneous cross-country <coughs> items as surplus equipment. Second. Okay. Motion and seconded to declare gym wall pads and miscellaneous cross-country items as surplus. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Item G, consideration to approve FFA County Fair Agreement. Right, Eric, is there anything special about this? Uh, the change is highlighted in yellow. Um, it's, it says in there that it'll be reviewed and revised every two years, so this is the year for revision. Other than that, I don't know anything more about it. Cassie sent it to me and asked that it be approved. Okay. These are the changes are highlighted in red. Uh, yellow, I believe. Yellow. <coughs> so there again, I mean, I know this is somewhat of a technicality, but we're approving this. Shouldn't there should be somebody here from FFA? I wouldn't disagree. <clears throat> Do you want to table it and have someone here next time? I don't know. We sure can. I just think it sucks. It does have some things in here about November, December for finalizing certain things. I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not. But. I just, I mean, we got to have a special session to approve it. We'll do it, but I, I want to send a message. Mm -hmm. I just think it should be here. Mm -hmm. Background says it's something you approve on a regular basis, but every two years or regular? I thought it was two years. The changes to be made, I thought I saw. <coughs> We can sure do that because honestly, I can't answer any questions that you might have. Because, you know, how do we, is there, is the county, is there anything here change? Are you I'm sure everything with it? What? I mean, I'm, are you I'm not worried about the document right. what's in it. It's just sending the message. Listen, if you have something on the agenda to approve, you really need to be here and explain it to the board. I would agree. I would agree. Okay. We're all in, pretty much all in agreement. We should table it and tell the representatives can, can be here. I'll make a motion to a, to table the FFA county fair agreement. Motioned and seconded to table the consideration to approve the FFA county fair agreement. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Item H, consideration to approve fiscal year 21 audit. Um. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the high points for us. Yeah, there. I mean, hopefully you had a chance to review it. I, we're talking about data that's almost 18 months old at this mm -hmm. point. This is a fiscal year data on June 30th of 21. So, um, you know, overall, a few things to improve on, but I don't know that we're ever going to get a perfect, perfect report back. Um, I think all oh, what's minor stuff that can be easily fixed. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we can work to fix these issues, and something else will be in there the following year. So. Overall, I was pleased with it. It's a it's a it's a clean audit with yep. no significant findings. So, um, looks like generally speaking, the district's in better condition than we were right in the previous audit. You know, ESSER or the COVID pandemic presented some challenges. You know, we had money flowing left and right, and trying to keep up on um, making sure the budget got amended. It just uh, I would venture to guess that uh, many districts across the state yeah. saw that they overspent in different areas of their budget. So. Um, you know, like I said, overall, I think it's a clean audit with no significant findings, and, and we're actually slated for the next for fiscal year 22 is here coming up in a couple weeks. So you know, hopefully, we'll have that one back in a shorter, shorter That's time frame. Ask you, so what, what does it put us that behind on the next well, one? it probably will, but uh, you know, they're under they and us are both under statutory limit to get these things filed to the state by March, they will grant extensions, which I'm sure we'll probably have to file for another one. But, um, you know, when they audit, that's going to be one of the things in the pre-audit conference that I'm going to address is that we need this report sooner than we did when we got it this year. Um, I know there are districts that got it, and there's probably still districts hanging out there that don't have theirs, but um, I'm going to request that ours gets bumped up somehow. To, we always seem to be one of the last ones, and 
we had our we had our, everything we needed for oh, the yeah. audit in on time. It was the yeah. state. They had uh, staffing issues. Our CPA firm had staffing issues. They only have uh, one CPA on staff, and then other. They had a lot of staff migration to different areas, so it just it was a perfect storm for them. And their CPA was in the hospital for an extended period of time, and she had to review all the audits. So it just bad year overall for them. But um, we're actually, you know, knowing what they've been through, I was surprised we were getting in the first week of December for this week, this year's audit. So we're going to hope for a better year. I mean, they they provide good service to us, and they mm -hmm. um, provide us assistance throughout the year. I can't complain about that. We're just going to ask that they speed up the release of our audit so we're not 18 months behind. It's hard to make changes based on, you know, comments that we're getting 18 months, uh, on stuff that happened 18 months ago. So it's hard for us to switch gears and make changes. And, for, the, you know, for the next. Yes. The next, so yeah. constantly behind. No. I mean, I didn't even have a chance to respond to comments for fiscal year 21 until fiscal year 22 was over. So I, you know, I would imagine some of these things may show up in the 22 audit, but um, we're going to deal with them as they come. <laughs> well, they were after the second extension. They just said, uh, you know, we're going to note that in your file, and that was I didn't get a, a new date. I just said we're going to note that in your file and get it to us as soon as you get it. I'll make a motion to approve fiscal year twenty one audit. Second. <clears throat> motion and second to consider to approve fiscal year twenty one audit. All in favor say aye. Aye. Close. Same sign. Motion passes. Item I, consideration to approve SBRC application for open enrollment out, not on prior year's headcount, $86,724. Okay, the next three items are all routine things that we do every year. Um, it's a chance for us to recapture spending authority. So anytime you <coughs> have a chance to do that, I would ask that you approve it. Motion to approve by my second. Motion and seconded to approve consideration to approve the SBRC application for open enrollment out, not on prior year's headcount of eighty-six thousand seven hundred and twenty-four dollars. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. <coughs> Item J, consideration to approve SBRC application for LEP instruction beyond five years of ten thousand eight hundred and ninety-seven dollars. Can you explain? There's acronyms and acronyms in there. Yeah. I don't know what they mean. Can you explain that to us? SBRC is the School Budget Review Committee. That's the state group that we actually apply to. LEP stands for Limited English Proficient. These would be our English as a Second Language course. And the MSA is just Modified Supplemental. That's our spending authority. So we're gaining the authority to spend money. Um, not cash in our in our pocket. It's just giving us the legal authority to spend <coughs> spend dollars that got accounted for uh, in this year's certified enrollment count. Uh, it, 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 yeah. I'll make a motion to consider twenty one thousand two hundred forty six forty eight. No. Ten thousand eight ninety seven. Oh, sorry, one, Kenny. I crossed the line. Thanks for pointing that out. I'll make a motion to approve J. Oh, Ten thousand eight hundred seven. Easier for you. <laughs> motion to approve SBRC application for LAP instruction beyond five years of ten thousand eight hundred ninety seven dollars. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Now, item K, consideration to approve LAP allowable cost MSA application of forty one thousand two hundred forty six dollars and forty eight cents. Removed. You gotta read it too. Oh, yeah. you tried. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Second. <laughs> what he's saying is we trust you. Oh. Okay. Motion and seconded to approve LEP allowable cost MSA application forty one thousand two hundred forty six dollars and forty eight cents. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Item L: consideration to approve bids for construction projects. All right, these bids were sent out to you um, in a separate email. You should all receive those. Kenny and Dave and I reviewed them <coughs> yesterday. Um, now, since reviewing them, some questions have come up. So, you know, we'll talk about each project separately, and I'm going to let Kenny and Dave um, 
share their thoughts on it too. Guys, do you have anything you want to share before we jump in? I did. Do you just want to start with A? We can do whatever one you want to do. So A is the high school staff room repairs. Um, Spectra came in at 7,316. Um, Geo or Evolve came in at 8,950. Um, I think when I looked at it, most of this is apples to apples. Um, however, on Geo's bid for Evolve, he does have something in there to fix cracks in the walls and repaint the room. Spectre did not have that. So I don't know. I was kind of mm -hmm. lost that, you know, is that something that needs to be done? Is that something that doesn't be, need to be done? Um, I'm kind of like, maybe if we need to go a little blame mm -hmm. and find out if that was a part of it. We were, our problem is we really don't know how that scope of work was laid out. If, you know, we don't really have a written scope of work there to go by. So we don't know what each individual was told. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you know, the bids are real close, but is, are, are there a need for some cracks to be repaired because of the flooring being removed and put right. back in? And is it going to paint? Right. I mean, generally, I think, you know, the Spectra's bid is probably what he was asked to bid, and, and Geo's too. Did, you know, sometimes did he, did he add that on his own is because he's right. seen the need right. in one of those deals? And who knows? The need do it. Right. Um, and I did awesome. get a hold of Rob today and said, you know, how, how did you get this information to people? Was there a written scope of work? He said, no, there wasn't. He took them around, he showed them, and they talked about what needed to be done. So, you know, there is nothing on paper. I mean, obviously moving forward, I think we're all in agreement that we needs to be in place. Yes. Because when, he, that when needs he, to be each done. contractor met with him individually and saw mm -hmm. the room individually, and they may have pointed out, you know, recommendations, and mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard to decipher what was said. It is. You know, I don't, I don't have a problem with either one of the bids, but I no. think we should have a little clarification there to make sure that if it's something that needs done and in that room at the time they're doing it, if, if uh, a Spectra, if he's doing that, then fine. Well, I think we've <laughs> talked about this on past projects. We really try to need to get a written scope of work. Right. Everyone's presented with the same, you know, here's what yeah. we want, and then did that accordingly. And, you know, in the case of, and I think it was done on this one, um, you know, we've, we've standardized the, the ceiling tile uh, mm -hmm. pattern or, or material that we want. So mm -hmm. that was listed in there right. because we ran into, I know, on a project years ago, one, mm -hmm. one company was way under another company. Well, it was because they bid a different type of uh, panel. Mm -hmm. So we need to try to get some uh, consistency there with, right. where, you know, and I understand Rob's new, um, but moving forward, yeah, that's mm -hmm. something yeah. we probably ought to address. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know if, um, you know, what you guys' feelings are if you want to move forward with the bids, if you want to re revisit and talk to the, the three contractors that were. Uh, I think there's a few of them that we could probably I go ahead on. I think we got to do them individually. I think most I mean, of them were apples to apples. We had a question, some questions on some discrepancies on just a couple of them. I think the other ones were probably all right on. The one, like, one we, that I noticed I don't, was I don't like, like the, to put it off too long because we need to get people scheduled, get some work, get them scheduled. Yeah. If we're going to do it. I agree with that. There was one that was, uh, it was the uh, closet edition. Um, the bump out? Yeah, that bump out room. It looked to me like there was some different materials listed, some people that had some different ideas. As to, um, you know, I think one included a roof. One did, one was just redo the flashing and use, reuse yeah, the existing roof. So. One that had some differences. Yeah, yeah. everybody so, spelled you know, it out differently. Where is that? Is that the one? It's so, so the adding the the cleans all work. Okay, that's what I I think one was, I they covered it with metal, the other one they were using. Mm -hmm. um, and an engineered siding, I think one was a vine. Yeah, so I mean that that would be something that I think you know we should lay out what kind of we should lay out the materials we prefer to use, or at least have a standard <laughs> material. And then you know, I think we've done this in the past with some, some contractors will, will list some options if, if you want to go with this as opposed to this. Yes. So Dave, you want to <coughs> talk about them individually? Is that your recommendation? I think so. Okay. okay. I mean, I don't see why. Why not? It's, there's just a few here. I mean, we're talking. We're talking about a. We need to talk about b. Make sure everyone's comfortable with how everyone worded it. And then, so, yeah. So I'm like, with voting on some of them, and, and the other ones, if we have questions like on a, you were concerned with the, the paint and the cracks, and you need to ask. I'd guess. like, yeah, number a. I'd like to hold off on for right now. Okay. Um, b. I felt that 
we could probably go ahead with that. I mean, it looked like it was pretty. B is the ceiling. Bridge, the ceiling right? tile, yep. I think we could go ahead with B. Um, unless anybody else had any. Which one was A? A was the high school staff room repairs. Okay, so you're going to table that? I'm table it. I would like that staff room and that subfloor repair is one of the ones we're going to see. Like we want to prioritize on so we would get some. That's okay. That F4 is bad. But what's almost as bad is there's no outlet to it. <coughs> we have there when you plug in you can probably test this one. We have when we where our refrigerator is in there for the staff work room where you, you plug into that and you have a you have about a Probably a four outlet power strip. Power strip there. And then we have one not too far away from that. And there's times where you plug stuff into it. The one outlet kicks out the other outlet. So what we're doing. So we need more electric. Uh, it is. It's just, I mean, it, it, it's just, it's, that that's just the way that room is built. I mean, there's, I think there's, I think that, that, or that entire room, I think there's three outlets separate. You know, three outlets. You know what I'm saying? And that's something you could get swallowed. Uh, or, or whoever else. Not to mention the time clock and the right. probably is there a service, is there a panel in your office electrical panel is there one in that room I guess where would the no, nearest panel probably back over the, 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 the boys restroom from the ground fold outlet yeah. so yeah. boys restroom I think there's a panel in that closet I'm pretty sure we've been asking for this stuff haven't we past few months or so am I wrong on electrical. We're talking about electrical. We were talking electrical at the elementary. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think this needs to be something we need to just put down on Rob's table and, and have him get some quotes on on improving what we may need in that that break room. If it's a need, we probably need to look at it. But and that Rob will get whatever. We just have to be very clear with what we want. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Give an idea. Get more than one circuit. Evidently. <laughs> Popping things. Uh, mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be that extravagant. A couple extra circuits in there will probably take care of it. Back to the tiles, if we're going to break this out. Am I looking at this right? That Evolve is 42, Spectra is 34, and Schaefer didn't, you didn't bid that one. So just two bids on that. Mm -hmm. And you guys don't, you guys are good. They both look apples to apples. I think so. I think so. So oh, Spectra was the low bid on that, 33657. Yes. What what do we know about starting dates on these both, both companies? I don't know if Rob's I, I don't think we have, have specific that's starting dates. That's one of those things that you have to you have to hit them up for that once we you know find out or give them the job out, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they know what we think it's going to be expecting. So we want to do a motion for each individual one, or so. In my opinion, I'd make a motion to table number A, high school staff room repairs, until we get more information. I don't see any. No, that was all water. When the three of us were doing it, we labeled them. So yeah, I'm looking for an A. We're trying to get it. I got you. Take that. I got it already. That makes more sense. Keep up with the talkers. Come on, guys. Jeez. I'm still figuring out where number A was at. I know where letter A is at, so, Kenny. I, what? <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. It's probably good. Yeah. yeah. Probably good. All right, so, so Kenny, you want to table? I would like to table. I'd make a motion to table that on the staff. Okay. I'll second. Motion and seconded to table the bid for staff, staff room repairs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. High school staff room repairs. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. <coughs> okay, I think the next one was the ceiling tiles. Correct. Yep. I don't see any problems there. I'll make a motion. To accept the, for the high school acoustical ceiling tile replacement. Expect for bill for the price of $33,657. Second. 
Motion and seconded to approve the bid from Specter Built for $33,657 for high school acoustical ceiling tower replacement. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same aye. sign. Motion passes. Um, I guess I would just follow up with that is it was that we follow up with Blaine. <laughs> you know, Blaine's done work with the school before, um, that we do it in a manner that is, is not conducive to disrupting school life. Nights, weekends, holidays, and it's pushed mm -hmm. out till summertime, whatever. Just right. I think he's probably already planning on that. We we'll probably just better double check. <clears throat> and Kenny and Dave, I believe the other three we have there are some questions about. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So do you want to table the three remaining? I think we had some. Was it, what was the question on the built access ladders? If we were using something existing, what was the deal there? Right, there's a question because we do have a rough ladder. There's a brand new one laying on the roof. Mm -hmm. So if they were going to fabricate something new, they're, unless they're changing the height or something, it shouldn't be needed. Mm -hmm. right. so I expect to, you know, do they know that? Because we've got down you know, fabricated steel access ladders. Right? And I so think there was, make me say that, did I see something about a home ac roof or something, an access ladder to that roof? I, yeah. If new gym entry, going around putting auditorium and just to word of caution, if he's wanting to put a bunch of access ladders up to get up, that's one thing, but you don't want to allow access onto our roofs from the ground. So right. there's a reason why there's not access ladders there now. Um, I did end up putting one in on the access ladder because there was kind of some confusion on where, where I was told mm -hmm. there's already access ladders there that are new that um, P&K installed. So when I tried to reach out to Rob, they got some help and that's what she's doing now. So we need some Yeah. I mean, you know, these access ladders, they have to be able to be locked up, I would think. You know, we, you, you need something going up to that new gym, I would assume, up on top of that road. There's one up there. Yeah. There's yeah. something there. Yeah. Okay. So it's on the southwest corner, south west side of the building. Yeah. So we need to talk to Rob about this, see what mm -hmm. the problems are, yep. because I think there, there was concern of his. There's, or, I, I know there are up. places where you have to go from one roof to the other. Right. And maybe that's what he's won, but okay. I kind of think that's what he's won. He just won a new. But I think the last time after T and K got done, I think you can go from roof to roof. Oh, those, they're, they're, there's access ladders all over the place. Yeah. And you can you can spec out an access ladder that will have a cage and a security gate at the top, mm -hmm. so you know kids can they can climb up, but they can get on the roof. Right. So. <laughs> They'll find well, a way. Climb on the it's a challenge. <laughs> Okay. So we're going to table all the other ones that we haven't approved. Is that what I'm hearing? What I would like to recommend is if they just have anybody that's wanting to bid on it, to mainly just have like a pre bid conference with Rob, because there are going to be some things that Rob does not know, you know manufacturer wise, that we should probably do. Um, Along with like a, uh, an initial. Uh, bid packet type thing, yeah, or even I mean, before the bid packet comes out. It, and maybe a board member, two board members, and write down, you know, I might have a suggestion on a press box. Blaine might have a suggestion, and, and we all collaborate and all end up with the same, you know, idea of what we're So at least you're bid not, at least you were bidding that. You're installing. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. I, I would agree with that. I don't have a problem with that, because you want guys there that are looking at that, knowing what they're doing what we're after and everybody would have different yeah. ideas. Yeah. I don't think they the material to use here. Here. I think we'll yeah. use this. And you don't want to pay an architect to figure out a scope no. of work for that principal. No, 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 no. no. Not for that amount. I think we need to put together a basic scope of work. Yes. Right. And then schedule with the contractors. They can look at that. Anybody that, ideas. Anyone that's yeah. interested in building, you know, bidding a job like that needs to show up to the for yeah. the meeting for the mm -hmm. bid so people can bounce ideas yeah. and come to a conclusion yeah. on what they want. Consistent consensus on that. I don't know, I say we we probably hold off on the rest too if we do have some questions on the ladders. I know there were some questions on the press box about uh, doors and somebody else didn't have doors and we you know so I, I know there's questions on, on that one. Um, what was the one on the the bump out, the siding, different some material like that. Lap siding versus, versus vinyl. Line. Yeah, one was metal, one was vinyl, one was uh, like which is mainly aesthetics. You know, which one right. you want to look at? Right. Residential remodel mix. Which, 
Well, on that, like I said, that that would be good on the, the conference because then you can, you know, <laughs> if you're wanting to sell an engineered wood product, somebody else wants to put metal, you guys can talk about the benefits, pros, cons, and then between a board member or two and Rob, you know, say, well, we think that this would be the best for the school, and then everybody at least, you know, if, then they can say, okay, that's what we're going to put in our bid. Right. They because, you know, same obviously metal and vinyl siding aren't going to cost the same. So right. one mm -hmm. person might be out just on the material they're using. And I, I'm looking at it, too, to help a contractor out, too, because it takes a lot of time and effort yeah. putting these yeah, goods together yeah. and doing stuff. And then we set come in here and we're confused. <laughs> yeah. and for them and to miss out. We, we, we table or we strike that well, out. Well, they got to start over. To be, you know, pretty not, soon you get them to where nobody wants to bid at anything. Well, and not saying that that's the case with Brett, but he, you right. know, he talked earlier that he didn't bid on one project because of confusion. So, mm -hmm. you know, then you end up not getting any bids because nobody wants to do any work. Exactly. You gotta figure out what we want to try to get three or four bids. And you're, I agree. Okay, so we've approved the ceiling tile. We've already tabled the staff room, correct? Correct. I'm going to make a motion that we table the bump out, the roof access letters, and the football press box sheathing repairs until next meeting. Second. second. Motion and second. Just the remainder of the project. Table the remainder of the projects until next meeting, provided more information is given. All yeah. favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thanks for coming in. Uh, item M, Esther Money's update. Uh, not a whole lot of change from previous month. Um, just a few things on SR3. We got billed for some open science kits and the graphic calculators. Um, still sitting at what I project to be about 138,000. You can, it doesn't matter either way. Brandon had me run some numbers. He asked if I would run numbers. Um, basically, full-time employees and part-time employees looking at another um, stipend to those folks here before the end of the year. Um, I think I've got 94 what I would consider full-time employees and five uh, part-time employees. So 99 employees and I, what I, around $60,000. Yeah, 50 59 something. So that'd be 53, 287. Yeah, 500 for the full time, 250 for the part time. But, you know, with only being five employees, I guess you could go either way. I think I gave him a worst case scenario. If you just did everybody at 500, right. it's, it's 50. So, so, what started the conversation is um, teachers and staff members inquiring with, with Mike about uh, bonuses and if we'd be doing anything before. Uh, the Christmas season, uh, like I said, like Eric said, I asked him to run the numbers there. If we were to give those bonuses out, five hundred dollars for just for everybody, every single employee, fifty-three thousand two eight seven, that would leave us approximately eighty-six thousand dollars left in ESSER <coughs> if we were to approve those bonuses for December tonight. And let me let me qualify that just a little bit. That <clears throat> and Brandon's right in these figures, but I I did tell him that I've been a little bit conservative on some of my estimates here. You know, I think we're high on some uh, the backfilling of some junior high positions. Uh, those were based on um, some teachers that are no longer here. But when I did my projections, I did that on purpose. I don't want to have to try and come up with money at the end. I'd rather have money to spend. <coughs> so you know, th this is kind of worst case scenario. But I, I do, yeah. I'm confident in my numbers. But I do feel like we're we're being conservative at the same time. So I guess we didn't talk about with a social worker that grant. Is mm -hmm. that taken out of ESSER? Because we know that's from a different grant. Are we taking that money out now? We have additional money? Well, we're still, <laughs> we're still paying for the Great Prairie one out of ESSER. Correct. And the one coming from you and I is no cost to us. Is Correct. that right? But so. we were going to pay for two days using ESSER, two days per week of social work, weren't we? And we still are through yeah. Great Prairie. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's any change. Yeah. And we don't project any changes from the federal COPS grant refunding anything because that's our percentage that we already use, right? Right. Yeah, that's it. That's, yeah, I don't know that we've gotten confirmation that we can use that as our match, but that's my hope is that we can right. use what we've already spent as our match. I don't sure. know. 
I guess I, I need to dig into that and figure out who we need to talk to to find that answer out. But. So those are the numbers. Just thought we'd inquire it since we were asked to. Um, I have no problem with it. And being conservative, we'll have a, still have $86,000 left if we want to talk about AC units, heating units, unit vents in certain rooms. We're not going to be able to do any all the rooms anyways. We already know that. Um, I think in your fall, I don't mean. I'm sorry. I, mean, I think inflation's still up. Mm -hmm. I think inflation numbers don't count a lot of food items and oil and gas and everything else. I think it's 7.7 .7 or whatever it was the other day. It's still from last year. I think it'd be nice during Christmas to give them all a little bit of a bonus. But okay. that's up to everybody else. I agree. I, I, I agree. You know, I think you know, uh, not that long ago we were talking about this you know, with the ESSER funds when we, what we did, you know, earlier. Yeah. And, you know, we put it out there that as time went by, we would try to see how it went and if we could, you know, swing something later down the road. So, I mean, Eric, in your figuring of the cash flow, the staffing positions that we're funding through ESSER, do you have those factored out through the lifetime of yes. the ESSER money? Yep. Okay. So that 130 that she said accounts for keeping those people already. Correct. Perfect. Through through next year. Through the next budget, right? right. Okay. Through the end of the 23-24 school year or the 22-23 school year? Through 22-23. So, so through this current school year. Through this. So my only well, concern... Social year. I got the social worker worked into next year. Okay. Um, Long-term subs are only through this year. Um, I guess it's just the social worker and the interventionist for next year. Okay. So I mean that's that's my only. I mean we have till September of twenty three to spend this, and we're funding some teaching positions through us or today. That if we spend this, we potentially don't have that money going into twenty three twenty four. I would definitely be about spending it on our people opposed to that. I'm not going to be a fan of air conditioning. I'll just tell you that. I, mean, I, I would definitely be you know, spend it on our people, but I'm just concerned there's some positions, especially when you look at, you know, Mike's enrollment, you know, certified enrollment's down. Um, we're already funding positions that I'm afraid will probably have to go away if we spend all of this. So is there a compromise in there? I mean, if we spend 50 and we only end up with, with 80, you know, that isn't going to fund two of those positions, two of those positions, the full-time subs that we have in there today that we're funding with ESSER. Um, so we need to, we need to be cognizant of that. Is there a compromise in there where we can still do something for the teachers, but, you know, at least try to keep a little bit more in there that we can fund two, two of those positions through ESSER in 23-24. <coughs> and keep in mind, ESSER wasn't necessarily meant to be a bonus. I'm I'm not opposed to that, but that's that's not necessarily what that money was there for to begin with either. Eric, I'm seeing, and maybe I'm wrong when I was looking at this, but social worker year two, interventionist year two, that's year one is this, this budget right now. Correct. Year two is for next, next year. budget. And interventionist year two, since we, we're not funding that position this year, we, we funded it last year. So, yes, those two positions are already in there. The only thing that isn't is your full-time subs. So and, what, okay. What kind of dollars are we talking for two full-time subs plus benefits? 50, uh, 55000 in salary. Um, you're probably talking 75000 each. No, no, for no, no, no. And the interventionist, you do have the dollars you have in there just to confirm. 23, 24 were covered on interventionist. Yeah, because we're not using an interventionist this year. And I've got a social worker built in there for next year. So if you figure 50 and 75 were 125, there's 138 that's going to be some cushion in there to be able to do that. I, mean, I'm, I, I, I would agree with Matt on this and the fact that I don't want to whittle us down to nothing. I, I'd rather spend it last minute than, and have a little bit in case something comes up between now and then. 
and to go ahead and, and, and get everything spent now and then address a need maybe next year when the funding would have still been available. I, I, I agree. We don't know what's going to come up. We have till 23. <coughs> we can still keep it there. We can still pay a teacher bonus and it, and it and essentially it becomes a little bit of a stay bonus too if you hold it out there just a little bit longer for, you know, for that. So do, you, do we split it in half? Do you pay 250 now and keep 250 in there, you know, to pay later down the road? Um, but I just... Yeah, that, that's my fear. We spend it all up front, something comes up, there's a need, and it's gone. And we Well, you know, the big one for me is, here is, is the staffing that we're, we're paying now, I'd answer. Um, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm not necessarily <coughs> saying you even have to cut, if you were offering a bonus now, to cut it now, but just maybe then say, okay, let's not look at any other projects short term sit on that money for what's left for a little while and see if something pops up or, you know, we may have something. I, I, I don't know hundred percent yet know exactly what will and what will not qualify for extra funds. But if we have some, some, you know, semi-major repairs that comes up, that we have to, you know, maybe we qualify so the placing of a, some kind of a heating unit or something, you know, air handling unit, things like that, that, that we could maybe put ourselves into a, Tight spot budget wise, but if we have that money still sitting there, that can that can address that. Well, if we want to keep our two full time subs because we don't have the money to fund them without Esser. Correct. If we want to keep them, they're seventy five, and then you're fifty. You're, I mean, you're down to where you got less than twenty grand left. And like Eric said, well, he's also figuring conservatively on things. So, but I don't also I don't want to just immediately think, okay, well, Eric, we'll have extra money. Right. So on page 52, correct me if I'm wrong, but it does have the pending cost of 22-23 long-term subs at 64517 So that's built into your calculation, correct? I'm sorry, which, what's it say at the top? ESSER, ESSER 3 lost learning. Lost farm. learning. That's for this year, yes. It doesn't take you past th this year, though. It did. But that, can we compromise and do, do some? I, I agree. It's nice to do something for the teachers, but I'm just afraid if we spend it all now and then we want to keep our subs, to Doug's point, everything's going on. You know, so. <laughs> and I'm drawing a blank. I know we hired one sub. We hired both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> one in each building. Yeah, let's let's talk middle ground then, and then let's look into three hundred. You just have something across the board because three hundred. It's something, but yet it, it leaves it should leave us with a little. What, what's that? What would that be? Well, if you got a hundred and you take off two hundred bucks. <laughs> Twenty grand. Thirty grand. Two point nine. <laughs> <laughs> In that phone. Yeah. <laughs> $3,300 or 33000 plus what's taken, what benefit was this taken? Just Social Security. That's figured in there. Okay. I'm just figuring that on 100 employees. So it leaves us with about 100 grand, right? Yeah. Which would fund your two full time subs, and we'd be like 30 bucks. I can tell you the two subs have only not been used. One day, and one day only. It's an important position. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, that's that's my only concern. Is how are we going to, you know, how do, how can we fund those long term? And if this money can help us do it, we don't want to get in. We don't want to back ourselves in those corners. Right. But it sounds like we could still do three hundred, have a hundred grand left over, that'll fund our subs with a little bit, with then twenty five to spare. Well, uh, you get so close to, if you get close to the end of the time when there's mm -hmm. funding stream and run, the, the deadline is running out, we still have have not utilized that money anywhere else. Then there's there's another mm -hmm. chance to offer a bonus. Mm -hmm. 
towards the end of the you wind down towards the end of what, June of 23? Uh, September, September 23. And Mike, you don't foresee, I mean, I, I know I asked right. you this, but I mean, with enrollment dropping, I mean, and I know we've done some really creative things to mm -hmm. fund current positions through ESSER. You don't see us in a position where we potentially have to cut and we need to figure out a way to fund other positions if we don't want to let people go? It's sitting here right now without Eric and I having officially crunched the numbers to do that. <coughs> I think we could get through a year without having to cut anybody or get especially creative. I don't think we can do that <coughs> forever. But well, the for this money, coming this year, money's not going to be there forever right. anyway. So Right. So I don't want to muddy the waters at all, but by doing this, are you basically putting a hold on the elementary air conditioning because you've got like twenty thousand dollars to do that? It's a lot of you, Mike. Well, I I just want to know. I want to know the direction you want to go. I'd rather spend it on our people than air conditioning, yeah. well, just because the, of the cost of upkeep. I just go back to, and I know nothing has gone down in price. When we bid, when we did the gym project in the home ec room, you know, the consumer what do you call it? Yeah, um, I think it was nine hundred thousand dollars air conditioning. It was over. It was so over two million to do the high school. Brett, you want to air or full time sub? <laughs> Loaded question, Brett. Unfair question. Loaded question. <laughs> Plead the fifth. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that if, you know, if you went and I understand what Brandon's saying, and, and I agree, we we can't afford to do the entire elementary. Mm -hmm. if there's some individual needs. Yeah, you know, I mean, we can still look at it. It's just, it's, yeah, from a, from a, it, it just is a very expensive mm -hmm. endeavor. What I am comfortable saying is, I don't think it would be fair to do this room and that room and that room. Uh, and that's that's going to be the hard part is which, who gets the air conditioning. I think that's, pretty, that's a hard <coughs> thing to do. That's a hard thing to do. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, that's something that we can look at. Well, we talked, you know, we talked about that on the other side of it that to having those rooms air conditioning for summer school purposes mm -hmm. and other training purposes or whatever you want to use and not yeah not doing everything but having a couple different rooms for those purposes but you know and maybe the initial goal is if you did want to do something to do more of the common areas like you know and granted i understand that the library is already air conditioned mm -hmm. but, you know more uh, computer lab yeah, well, bigger, it's, bigger it's rooms an issue, too, but um more of the common areas addressed first that would benefit all students and staff that go into those rooms not just mainly like Okay, the room on the southeast side is one of the hottest. Let's do it first. Well, you know, I, I just that's pretty <coughs> you know, tough to sell. Well, yeah, if, if I mean, if we want our substitutes, and if we're talking about doing this this bonus, it's a moot point because we don't have the money. I don't know if that's entirely true. The fact that we have budget money for subs, we're just we've just chosen. Out of our general budget to, to use ESSER to cover that. I mean, we still have. Yeah, I don't know that our our sub costs are going down. Otherwise, um, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean we we budget and we've always just gone way over budget on oh. bringing in outside subs. And what is our budget traditionally for subs? Do you have that? Oh, probably fifteen thousand in each building. So we're double. That's thirty. It, granted, we've cut way down on the paying the staff to cover in house when they cover give up their prep period. We cut down considerably on those costs, but uh, I think the last month was still over four thousand dollars. To now, there's I guess there's some extenuating or unique situations in in that in last month's too. So it's probably not a fair statement. But no, we can still <laughs> gather the information on, on wiring the rooms and whatever. I just, I, I feel like I had to throw that out there, that you're talking about much less money to devote to that, which is fine. We'll still gather the, the numbers, and we can decide from there. So you're saying that on the budgeting, you know, uh, with the uh, ESSER funds and doing with the sub, which is fine, but we have a certain amount of money that we use for subs anyway mm -hmm. that we have lessened on that we can actually <coughs> pull back into. No, I don't know that you're going to be less on. We were just way over. We've just been way always been way over. Budget over. Before. Okay. So 
essentially we're even our feet up our way over the budget by using mm -hmm. we, we've, we've cut back on the closer other. to budget. Since you've been on the board if we had extra money to pay teachers. We haven't had so, that. Well, we've had extra we've money cut. funds. We have not had extra money. money. We've any time, any time we've, yeah, any time, there's never any too much money. I mean, I, I so there was never just a that. solid budget figure for subs. There is, is, but I mean, you it's, can't just stop when, can't it, just stop when we've hit the yeah. limit. Well, we don't have, I mean, we don't have to make the decision on the air conditioning. No, you know, no. We got till September. I mean, we, we can see what happens still over the next that. year. We can yeah. still do something for the yeah. teachers tonight. See what happens on this other stuff, and then we. I mean, yeah. um, we have a. Better. We can revisit that stuff mm -hmm. in the spring. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, we look at it that way too. When, when it's in needed, where maybe we would have to prioritize towards some summer school classes or something. Um, we use an action item. Yeah, I was just looking at the first one. It says oh, action. Okay. All right. We agreement to. Move forward with three for all employees for now, and before check or deposited before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Certified, mm -hmm. non-certified, everybody. Three across the board. Yep. Is that a motion? Yes, yeah, sure is. Was it seconded? I'll second. Motion is seconded to, as part of the Esser Money's update, offer a three hundred dollar bonus to every staff member mm -hmm. to be mailed out. Before Christmas. All fair say aye. 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 Both same sign. Budget passes. Merry Christmas. Okay. Consideration set date and time for next meeting. All right. December 14th is the second Wednesday. However, there is at least one conflict with one board <coughs> member on that night because Community Club has their Christmas event, and I understand the Sheriff's Department is involved with that. That's correct. Okay. <coughs> Fifteenth for gathering all the toys for the toy drive. Um, that's a Thursday, so we'll be busy that night. Um, I don't think we're going to get any Christmas week, so. Fourth and third. The fourteenth and fifteenth, I'll be busy both nights, but uh, the twelfth and thirteenth. Thirteenth is a middle school music concert. Well, there's a high school music concert on the twelfth. Daughter's birthday. She'll kill me. Six. Which one? The twentieth. Yeah. December six or seven. <clears throat> I get, I, I'm out of it. One seventh. Come on. What's the nineteenth? Is that a Tuesday? Or Monday. The Monday. Could do the 19th. Okay. Uh, Matt. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, it's Hanukkah. I can that. Huh? Far it's out. Hanukkah. I change some things, but I, I that works for everybody else. I can make it work. Huh? What day? 19th. JV game at home. Anything going on school wise on Monday? JV, 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 JV home basketball game. <clears throat> It's actually JV Varsity. It says. Yes, so well, I remember when we back in the day, we always did them on Wednesdays. You guys are all I'm fine with Wednesdays. I'm not against Wednesdays. We just got to wait for them because you you start that with um, no problem. Just late. We wanted, I wanted to do them at 10 o'clock yeah. at night. We, we, we held back for you one time. Well, you, that got but you have Fridays off, so you can sleep in. So... What's up? <laughs> what day are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, I'm not really sure what day we're on now. Rest quickly. Just get with you. What day is not 21st? I'd be too close to people traveling. Let's look at January. Jeez. Oh, yeah, let's just have a meeting right after this one. <coughs> what was on? What was going on on Monday the 19th? Eric, no, Eric was, was basketball. No, there was no basketball game. What is the seventh? Is that a Wednesday? Yep. But Eric isn't available. Yeah, Eric's yeah, not available. I right. moved it to be available on the 14th. If you wanted to, you could not available. do oh, yeah, the 14th, right. but not start until 7. Yeah, that would get us over with. Because the Christmas event will be done by then. If you wanted to have a later well, starting time kind of meetings. on the 14th. I'm fine with that. I can do the 14th. Yep, let's, let's do that. Eric? Yeah, works for me. Okay. Motion for the next board meeting at 14th at 7 o'clock. Second. 
Motion seconded to have the next board meeting, December 14th, 7 p.m. on Beverly Aye. 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 Same sign. Aye. Motion passes. Item O, consideration to go into closed session pursuant to Code of Iowa, Section 21.5. Move and seconded to go into closed session. Say aye. 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 Yeah, Eric, would you, even though it might not necessarily be an agenda item, will you have, you'll have that ESSER update on this for every single packet? I believe so, I yeah. Will it's kind of, I just think it's just good. That way we get updates and build actually, you get actuals in there. You'll put in the figure for this 